What was that like growing up as a as an FBI kid? You know, it was fun. I mean, it, the it's not quite as hard, I think, as being an army brat because you don't have to move around quite so much. At least I did. You moved you moved a little bit though, right? Yeah, you know, we did. Uh, but I kind of grew up in Oregon and then back to DC, and then my father got stationed in London, became the legal attaché to the United Kingdom, and so. Yeah, just like really fascinating people. I, uh, you know, military people, CIA, FBI, the DEA guys. And so you always got to hang out with them. And then you got to, uh, I don't know, just bang around and listen to all these stories and, and things like that. So it, uh, it, it, was, it was really interesting. And, and um, I, I think, obviously kind of informed everything that I did with my writing career. And at some point in there, you meet Tom Clancy along, along the way. What, at what point was that? Uh, you know, it was kind of a strange situation. So Tom was writing, I would have been his second book, and the legal attache to the United Kingdom was going to be a main character in it, a major character. In it. And so he wasn't really super famous at this point. I mean, Hunt for Red October had done well and everything, but you know, I mean, it was, he's a one book. He'd, he'd written one book at that point. So being Tom, he still owned, he still worked at the insurance agency at this point. He wanted to talk to the, personally to Leo Attaché. So he called my father and said, if I flew to London, would you meet with me? And my dad was like, ah, there's some guy who writes about submarines. <laughs> how did um, you get your dad's number? Like, could you call the FBI yeah, and say, they, hey, I want to talk to this guy? Like, how does that the, work? FBI or if you called the embassy. And they put him through, I guess, to one of my dad's assistants. And he said, yeah, you know, my dad's always been a huge thriller fan. He probably read the book. And uh, so, yeah, so Tom flew over. And I remember my, my father had called home and said, I was this, like, insurance guy who writes books. And <laughs> he seems like he doesn't know anybody in town or anything. So do you mind if we just, can we just make him dinner? So he, he came to dinner. And uh, I had never. So <laughs> how old are you uh, at this point? Oh, I was probably 19 or something. Okay. And, uh, yeah, was, he was a super interesting guy. Like he's an incredible intellect and grasp of geopolitics and the military and all this stuff. He's super impressive. Um, and then my father became, my father's name is Daryl Mills and he became Dan Murray in the books later. I think he eventually became director in the series. That's and, awesome. I did not know that. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. And then, uh, and they became, had, you know, kind of a lifelong friendship after that. Um, amazing. Amazing. Now, if friends, you were 19, so, when uh, Tom Clancy is working on Red Storm Rising, you are aging quite well, my friend. It, uh, it must be all the, the siestas in, uh, in Spain. I don't yeah, know. Something, it must be. Yeah, something but, going yeah. between Jackson Hole and Spain, not a, not a bad gig. <laughs> it's my, it's my Barbara Walters soft filter I've got on. <laughs> fantastic i need to i need to talk to my people about getting one of those <laughs> um, but that's amazing you get to meet tom clancy and then and then later you go to uh you go to college and uh something happens with pan am 103 um obviously lockerbie scotland uh yeah. and you're in college at the time you're just graduating right. um and happened on my not my graduation dinner night <sighs> amazing and your dad is there and he gets called out to go go deal with pan yeah. am 103 we were out to dinner uh, to, for my graduation and my father, they, my parents had given me a briefcase for, I, I studied economics and, and we were having <laughs> you got the a, Alex P. Keaton g- briefcase. Oh, totally. Did, yeah. That's fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Which I wore out in, when I was in banking. Um, and, uh, yeah. And my father's assistant came in and said this, the plane had gone down, but at that point they thought it might just be a, a bit of mechanical. Um, mm-hmm. but there was a lot to coordinate. Um, because Lockerbie is a tiny little town. They don't have any resources. So um, it started to look, actually, I think during the dinner that maybe it was not a mechanical. And so, yeah, my, my father finished dinner and off he went and he moved to Lockerbie um, for months, as I recall, uh, and coordinated the FBI's efforts there and coordinated the, or helped try to bring in resources because obviously he was really connected to uh, the top people at, uh, you know, MI5 and Scotland Yard and all those people that Lockerbie, the people, you know, whatever, would you be the yeah. sheriff of Lockerbie? 
would not be. So <laughs> helped, you know, everybody was kind of yeah. working together with the British and the Americans and other European authorities to uh, try to get that cleaned up. But it was, you know, I mean, it was a mess. There were people and debris strewn. Yeah. Now that investigate the story of that investigation is is so amazing. There's a there's a book I have it in the on the shelf here. Uh, I think it's called Lockerbie. Uh, I have to go find it again, but it's a, it's an incredible book on the investigation and um, everybody that you talk to who was involved in that. I mean, it, it affected them so deeply and so personally um, as they devoted their time, energy, effort, and their lives to uh, to figuring that out for the longest time. And yeah. Uh, yeah, the backstory on that, and then the the future of I mean, it was just just the whole thing is uh, is is absolutely it's devastating, and uh, and it's an incredible story, obviously. And then of course there's the link later to Mitch Rapp to the character, uh, yeah, and, uh, and what uh, an event obviously that makes him uh, who he is in the stories. So what, yeah, what it's a, easy what a crazy to date connection. him. And now it's easy to date him too because because he and I are exactly the same age. You're like graduating from college. Yeah. Uh, during Phantom 103. Of course, I don't age him, so he's he's aging more gracefully than I do. 